give time time to do what time is supposed to do. It's just in what you would perceive to be a tough time right now. At this moment, it seems to be a tough time right now. The time is constant. It will not always be this way. All right, guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode in the Evolution Podcast. Today with me are, as usual, Ethan P. Heisey and Mr. Johnson, Terrence X. Johnson, and myself, Sagi Schreiber. Um, so, guys, today, what we said we'll talk to you guys about is marriage, or basically how to run a successful business beside, like alongside a successful marriage. Um, so we got this kind of like mix and match of like different, uh, um, you know, uh, the different longevity of like marriages here. So Ethan's been married for two years um, and I've been married for about 11 and Mr. J, 20 freaking seven years of marriage. So he's got a lot to talk to us about. And um, just to mention, like one time on Clubhouse, Mr. J brought on Marie, his wife, and they both gave us an amazing uh amazing session on marriage um so that that was epic and i think like so many so much wisdom had been brought by that session that i would love for us to kind of like really bring a lot of that into this uh into this episode so guys sit back enjoy and uh let's begin mr j what do you have to say to us about marriage and business and First life? Of all, good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are in the world as you're listening to this as always it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to share my thoughts and my opinions uh what do I have to say about marriage? Well, uh, marriage is a good thing, um, given it in general. <laughs> yeah, in general, given the right circumstances and situations. Now, you know, I, I, as someone would listen to me, and see, my wife and I have been married 27 years, and uh, I'm very much still in love with my wife after all those years. Um, there were times throughout our relationships we had various challenges, a lot of arguments. Uh, to be honest. Um, I don't think we were any different than any other couple. I just think that somehow, some way, um, a lot of prayer, a lot of soul searching, uh, a lot of learning how to love a woman and, and learning how to let a woman love you. Uh, and in conjunction with your own personal endeavors, your drive, your ambitions, you know, being in business many years and all of what comes with that as well and the amount of sacrifice that's needed by both parties to uh, sustain a long-term relationship it is uh, it's, it's a challenge, but at the same time, it's very much worth it. So um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't want to be a naysayer and make a, a bad argument for marriage, but we will talk about the real challenges you will face. By no means, we're not going to shy away from the truth. But I think uh, whenever you're performing some type of marital surgery, if you will, the best, the best surgeons leave minimal scarring. So it's not my goal here in this conversation to scar anyone against marriage and anything that, that we do say or might prick someone that we leave minimum scarring because obviously the goal is always to uplift and to help and to edify. So, Ethan, what's your take on that and what Mr. J just said, you know, considering, you know, you've been married for two years, where's your, where are you at with this? Well, for me, maybe I'm still in the honeymoon phase. I don't know. But it's like a sleepover every night. I get to wake up to the person of my dreams every single day. It is so exciting. Uh, I've known my wife since freshman year of high school. So she was well, like 14 and I was 15, like right before we got into school. So it's uh, it's been a while. Um, however, we got, we've been married two years and it's been a great experience. However, there are still arguments and um we, I guess we can talk about that too, but uh, excited to share more. Love it. Um, so, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead, Mr. Day. I was going to say, we, we brought this conversation up for you guys. So why are we talking about marriage today? Um, you know, I, I, uh, these guys are my mentees as well. And a lot of times we have very personal conversations. Um, and uh, unfortunately, most people won't share their hearts with people. And I get it. You know, you got to be careful how you give information to, to individuals. But 
particularly when it comes to marriage and personal relationships. I hear many young people say that, you know, marriage is antiquated, it's outdated, or, um, you know, that there might not be good men. Or I hear young, a lot of young men say, you know, women aren't any good. You know, this, this whole uh, dark cloud that's been placed over a sacred union, and many people have lost sight of that. And let me be the first to say, by no means am I simping that, oh, I'll come off the block, I'm an OG, believe me. And a lot of people understand what I mean by that. But at the same time, I would be less than honest and solid if I wouldn't give my wife her just due. I would not be the man that I am. I would not have the success that I have without my woman. And some men might disagree with that, but my woman was very uh, instrumental in me developing um, as a man, as a father. You know, there's no instruction manual on how to be a husband. There's no instruction manual on how to be a, 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 a father, you know, and a lot of times we learn through trial and error. And, you know, you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to be cruel. You don't want to be mean. You don't want to be perceived as uh, somewhat dogmatic. And I love to hear Ethan's enthusiasm as he's very young and he's very much in love. And it's just awesome because uh, some people might say, wow, I wish I could have something like that. But we, we all have the opportunity to find love. But you have to be willing to be in love. And I think one of the fundamental principles of my wife and I's relationship is that it's simple. We want to be married. A lot of times, you know, people will get married and then run into some challenges, if you will, be it financial, medical, whatever the case might be. And what I tell a lot of my young mentees, what I see is a lot of young people just, just don't want to go through anything. It is easy to have a relationship when the conversation's good, the money's good, the sex is good, everything's just flowing like milk and honey. That's an easy relationship. You ain't really have no challenges. That you're not really facing any difficulty. But the vow says, in good times and in bad, for richer or for poor. And when you look at it in its true context, in its true meaning, a lot of people can't stand it. Many people want a, a, a wedding, but they don't want a marriage. A marriage in my relationship, and maybe one day we'll have my wife come on. I'm sure she'd be more than to come share her peace. And by all means, I encourage that. I don't want it just to be a one-sided thing. But I would say to most young people, if you want to be married for a long period of time, there's going to be a lot of sacrifice on your part. You are ever learning. You are ever changing. Your relationship is somewhat, in, in a way, related to the title of the show. It is evolving you two might marry at 20, 21, 22 years old. And as you grow older together, that's one thing that's a privilege too that I've learned that I've been able to age gracefully with my wife. We were young like you guys are now at some time. We were young like you and we were kids and we were in love. And it was that honeymoon waking up next to your roommate and all that good stuff. It, it was that. It, and it was really cool. It really is. But as you grow, as we all do, you go through different stages of life. And, you know, in your 20s, you think one way, in your 30s, another way, in your 40s, one way, in your 50s, another way. And all the challenges that you're going to endure, be it financial or medical, if one of you gets sick or something happens, there's so many things that are truly beneficial. Why you need this spouse. It is not good to be in this world by yourself. It is not. It is not cool either just to go from... Chick to chick to chick to chick, you know, you know what we do as men. I don't have to go into all that. And I was guilty of that myself when I was a youngster. It's no different. But hopefully you mature, you gain wisdom. Hopefully you're smart with your money. The best advice I would give any young man is to learn to love himself. Notice I did not say love your woman first. That's a great mistake. Often one that is preached among the masses, that your wife and children come first. I strongly disagree with that. Let me explain. The better you can love yourself, the more love you are able to give your wife and children. But whenever someone puts anything above them, outside of their God, and you make yourself a second to that, that builds resentment in a lot of people. You hear men say it all the time, the kids are more important than me. Or you hear a woman say, my children come first, which I think is a grave mistake. Because if this is your husband, before you had children, it was you and him, and your children will grow up and leave you, just like we all left our parents. You want to build a foundation that is strong, that is built on love and trust. You have to be honest, even when it's hard. It is hard to tell the truth 
Most people say be honest. Most married couples cannot be honest with each other. I prove it to you. Your wife comes in, she puts on a pair of jeans. She asks you, are these jeans, do I make these jeans look fat? <laughs> it's a setup. It's a setup. <laughs> complete setup. It's, it's complete setup, man. If she has to ask you that, she knows that she might not look her best, but she's looking for you to lie. You know, or say a guy, you know, I don't know, he's, he's lost a six pack, whatever. I don't know. And, and, and he says one thing to his wife and she lies to stroke his ego because she doesn't want to hurt their feelings. Me and Marie really are still friends, man. This is what I tell you. Stay cool with your woman. Stay cool with your wife, man. Y'all were friends before the bills, the mortgages, the car payments, the, the water bill, gas bill, the kids and preschool and shots and all. You were friends. Me and my wife, we still cool with each other. We still friends after all these years, you know, so. So, so I, I know I just wanted to stop you right there for a second, because I know a lot of things that people listening to the show right now don't know for instance like because there have been a couple of sessions where we talked about it also Marie talked about it and I guys mm-hmm. weren't cool all along I mean mean I mean you had no, the no. you had a very hard time, right yeah, um, yeah. Like, like the business you went through very hard times and grew out of that so that's why I think like you're so credible to talk about it because you didn't just have a you know a great you know no, regular marriage nah. you didn't also have an average marriage which, which a lot of people still have. Um, you went through like ups and downs and, and the downs were, so, um, how do you, I mean, what are your tips after going through so much, you know, ups and downs, like, how well, do you well, say? this is what I would say to people. This is why I believe a lot of couples fail. They don't want to go. Okay. Let's keep it simple. I'm gonna put it in a way that most people can just simply understand this. I want to go to the gym. Look at the gym as your marriage. Okay. I want to get bigger. I want to get stronger. Now, this applies to men and women. The, the rules are all equal here. This is not have nothing, nothing to do with gender or nothing. Stay with this analogy. I go in the gym and I want to get stronger. And there's a bunch of weights over there. Now, the only way for me to get stronger is to lift those weights. Now, I know if I lift those weights, it's going to hurt. This is why most people don't go to the gym because it's painful. It hurts. So remember, the gym is your marriage. So if I go into this gym, if I want to get bigger and stronger, I have to go through this workout. There's no other way around it. I want to look a certain way. I'm speaking from a female's perspective and a certain address. I want my buttocks to look a certain way. I want my body to be formed a certain way. So now my trainer is taking me through a various routine of exercises and I'm exhausted and it hurts. And, it, and frankly, it doesn't feel good. I'm a man. I'm going through the same procedure. I want my shoulders to get bigger. I want my abs to get tight. I want my chest to be more pronounced. And I got this trainer. And I'm doing all these reps. And it's really heavy weight. And it's pushing me to a point of muscle failure. Remember, the gym is your marriage. The marriage is struggling. Just like at the gym. And remember, you don't have a spotter. It's you in the gym. Now, if I keep that routine up in that gym over a period of time, not instantaneously, but over a period of time, my body becomes stronger over a period of time. And even though it hurts, it doesn't feel good. This is the process I have to go through if I want to look like that. Okay. Now, how does that relate to marriage? It's the same thing. When the marriage is going through stress, whatever it is, outside of deal breakers, and we all know what they are, cheating and all that stuff, those are deal breakers. That's, but just to say you're having disagreements, money problems or whatever, and the marriage is stressed, as it was with me and Marie. Your marriage is in the gym, and it's being worked out. And it has to be worked out in order for it to grow strong. You see, anybody can just go in a gym and just look at the weights and don't lift them or nothing. Nothing will happen. Nothing will change. They walked in a certain way. They left a certain way. They exerted no force or whatever, or whatever so they experienced no result. But if you go in that gym, Ethan, if you go in that gym, Sagi, and you start hitting those weights, 
and you know it hurts. As a matter of fact, when you work it out, having God said, man, I'm lightheaded. That's the guy in the mirror saying, man, I don't know what to do. Man, did I make a mistake? I'm, I'm nauseated. Every time I work out, I get sick because I'm pushing. Man, I'm sick of being married. We've all heard that. But what most people don't realize, how do you get through those turbulent times is to go through them. I find it fascinating. Peep this. A man and woman will get married and they'll have a child or even more than one. And they will go through hell and be on for their children. But won't do it for each other. I often found that fascinating. Think about it. A man will have to go to court to see his children or a woman to take that man to court to make him pay money. You have all the ills of evil. No one wants to talk about that. Why a lot of marriages fail? Because people are evil. They have an evil heart and an evil mind. They hurt each other. Marriages fell because people hurt each other. Me and Marie had to get out of the business of hurting one another. Her, you know, being argumentative or whatever. And me, you know, cussing or disrespecting them. I'm being honest. I don't want you guys to look at Mr. Johnson and say, well, he always had a great honky doy marriage. Man, that's, the, that's some bullshit. That's not true. There's never no adultery or anything like that. But we had a lot of arguments over money, over sex. One thing men hate when they get married, if your woman ain't giving you enough love and they, she, you know, she's not doing the things you wanted her to do. I, and me and my wife would have some real conversation. And that's another thing I would tell a man, keep it a buck with your woman. Be completely honest. Don't, don't, don't treat her less than you because she's not as strong as you physically. And, and, and my wife, she's not dressed now. She's taking care of some bit, but she would come down here and tell you, yeah, my husband, he just keeps it a buck with me. And that's what I found works best. Just be honest. If you're not satisfied, you got to tell them. You know what I mean? That's why so many strip clubs and adultery and all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Because a lot of men don't share how they really feel with their wife. You know, I tell my wife, we've been married 27 years. I'm still, she still look good. Keep it sexy. Keep your body tight. Keep yourself looking good. Keep that person attracted to you. You know what I mean? This just real conversation, man. Here's a good rule for both of you to realize, too. Always remember, no one respects your marriage but you. It sounds like my business. <laughs> well, you know, right? you got to run your marriage. As I told you the other day, yeah. the reason me and Marie are successful in our marriage, too, is I run my marriage. Now I'm talking my financial aspect of marriage, yeah. like my business. Right. Yes, because a lot of it starts with leadership as a man. Now, a lot of men don't want to hear that. There is no 50-50, man. I, you, can, you, know, you can believe that shit if you want to. There ain't no 50-50 in my house, man. I'm responsible for every goddamn thing. Straight up. But I'm going to sit up here and lie and be politically correct. That's bullshit. I'm telling the truth. And I can tell the truth. This is what it is. It's hard, man. And a lot of men, you know, it's, what, what do I mean by that? It can be difficult. A lot of men aren't fortunate to, to, to be in this position. You know, we, we're very fortunate men, so I'm not naive. Some parents, you know, husband and wife, both of them got to work. And, and Marie and I did early in our marriage. We both had jobs. And, but, you know, you, you, you move, you grow, you, you hopefully you, you, you increase your territory, your revenue, your cash flow. And you can do some bigger and greater things. So, you know, but one thing I always did with my wife is I always talked to her. I always was kept it, you know, 100 with her. I never bullshitted her. And I would tell all men that don't bullshit your woman. Tell her the truth, man. Straight up. You know what I mean? That way you ain't got to... You know, this is why I tell a lot of brothers, because I have a lot of men that I mentor, and a lot of them are married. And I know a lot of them doing dirt. I mean, they keep it a buck with me. You know what I mean? Mr. J, you know, they tell the truth. They feel safe. It's cool. But I always tell them, man, you should tell your woman the truth. You know, give her the opportunity to make a decision in whether or not whatever direction you guys are heading in, but all leadership starts with that man. That's why I hold men accountable. You know what I mean? And I'm, am I saying oh, women don't make mistakes? Am I saying believe every woman? Hell no. Let me reiterate that point. Hell no. <laughs> Not Eve. But what I'm saying, if you're married and you're the husband, there's no 50-50. It's just, that's, that's some shit they just told everybody look what they did to the institution of a family you know it's you if someone broke in your house 
You're not going to send your wife downstairs to see what's going on. You're going to go see what's going on. You're the man of that house. And it is what it is. You know, and uh, unfortunately, and now, I mean, this might not. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm so happy that you're saying that because, um, like, we had Nicole and then, um, you know, and I was talking to you about the financial situation, right? And you're like, right. hey, like, business is you know like family financials is like your business like you should treat it like one do you do you lead your business like yes so you should lead that side of your house you know like you it's like i think we got to take ownership of some stuff that a lot of society has told us not to take ownership of and uh, you know obviously if you're a woman and you're like the sole provider in your, in your household i bet there are instances where that's true um i don't know what the man's doing but the, maybe the wife is bringing most of the income fine the wife can run it right the wife is a business yeah. owner but again like i think it's great that we can acknowledge that it's not 50 50 and that there are some limit like some responsibilities here some responsibilities there um so my question is how do you communicate that do you have do you have communication or did you talk about that with marie like marie that's what i'm in charge of that's what i want you to be in charge of well it's, it's not even about being in charge of anything you see let me put it to you in layman's terms a lot of times people make things much more complicated than they need to be it's simple let's suppose you're the manager at McDonald's at a restaurant. I don't care what restaurant it is. And the owner comes in and says, you're responsible for everything in this restaurant. But here's the caveat. You can't tell anybody in this restaurant what to do. Are you set up for success or for failure? Set up for failure. failure. Yeah. It is the same failure. in a marriage. Failure. You can't tell a man you're responsible for protecting and providing but you can't tell anybody in this house what to do. You can't give a man the responsibility of a family and not the authority of leading it. Just like you can't give that manager the responsibility of running that restaurant, but he has no authority to lead it. The restaurant would fail. That's what would happen in a marriage. Now, does that mean I don't listen to what my wife has to say? Of course, I wouldn't marry the chick. I didn't respect her opinion. This is what I tell any man. I listen to it. If I think it's valid and it's viable and it can benefit us both, why wouldn't I take it? You know, that's good advice. And I know she loves me. But a lot of times that's not always what happens because by nature, men and women are different. This is just a common sense thing. They say we're equal. I'm six foot nine. I weigh 288 pounds. My wife is five foot four. I think she weighs 140. We're not equally physical. She can have a child. I can't have a child. We're not the same physically. Her mentality is entirely different than mine. Marie buys candles and what is that potpourri and yeah. women's stuff. No, I don't know how else to say it. I don't think like that. We're, we don't think the same. Yeah. It doesn't mean we are the same, but they keep trying to say y'all the same. Men and women are the same. We are not. It, and, and it's unfortunate because the fact of the matter is don't no woman usually want a man who's super soft and effeminate, a pushover, a, a, what do they call him, a simp? He's a sucker. You know, he's usually they want a strong man. They have standards. Did you hear women say, I want a guy that's tall, dark, and handsome? They have certain standards that they want. Men need to have the same standard of a woman. You know, and a lot of times, to be honest, a lot of men just got soft over the last 30 or 40 years. Straight up. They soft. They're afraid to speak up. I'm married. I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing well. So I, I'm going to speak my piece. I got my woman. I'm good. You know what I mean? But a lot of men, man, they just they don't understand. No one's really taught them how to be a man and how to lead their family. And a lot of times they don't even know how to talk to their woman because the woman, she's going to be argumentative with them. She want to yell and scream and disrespect you, call you all types of names. Now, maybe not you guys in particular. We just speaking in general terms, and not all marriages are like that, but a lot of them are. They don't have effective communication skills. And a lot of this comes back, believe it or not, to how you grew up. If you saw your parents married, if you grew up in a two-parent household, you're more apt to become married and stay married. Not all, but you, you're more apt to do that because you saw that example growing up. I had a mother and father growing up. Unfortunately, they divorced. But when I divorced, I was a teenager. I had saw the, the construct of marriage. I've seen a mom and a dad every day growing up as a child when I went to school. And, you know, those things do play a part as you get older. 
And how do you communicate? And what I did learn from my parents' demise of their marriage is what not to do, what not to do, you know? So, you know, it's, it's a process, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I would tell any man, how do you talk to your woman? You don't want to be, um, you don't want to be mean. You don't need to be mean towards your lady. This is what I tell all guys. And you don't have to buy their damn affection either. If a woman really loves you, you can have give her a cup of coffee and she'll walk through the fire with you straight up. You don't need to be spending thousands of dollars and going for that bullshit. Even as a husband, if your wife loved you, she would go through the hell and fire with you. Have you ever seen a homeless couple? The homeless man is with the woman. It's her and her man. They both homeless, but they still together and they have nothing. And you have couples who have money and cars and houses and can't even be together. You see, everyone thinks that if you make a bunch of money, it'll mean you have a great marriage. This is a lie. Yeah. Me and Marie were poor. Is when we found our marriage. I would tell anybody, it's when you face something. And so you got to lead as a man. I say this to all men. You have to be strong, man. You got to have some balls, man. Now, I'm not saying you be mean, you're disrespectful, you're arrogant, you're condescending. I am not saying any of that. You want to be love, loving, kind, and considerate. It is incumbent upon every man to lead his family. That means I've got to love my wife by example. So when, I, when my children look at me and mommy, they see how daddy loves mommy. Now, sometimes mommy make it difficult for daddy to love her. <laughs> Just being honest. But you have to wear that kingship, if you will, as the king of that house, as the leader of that house, as the general of that house, as the protector of that house, as the provider of that house. You have to walk in that leadership and, you know, talk to guys who've been married 20, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, talk to older people who you know you respect it and hopefully you can learn something from them because um, is it all worth it? Yes. Notice I didn't hesitate. Did I give up a lot? I don't. We're on a podcast. We'll keep it friendly. What did I give up? All them, all those other women. Straight up. That's what you lose being married, man. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, when I got sick, yo, my wife was there. She was there for me when I was going through, a, you know, a bad financial situation. Uh, with my business, my wife never worked, but she held it together with what we had. There's something to say about loyalty. I think men respect loyalty like women respect fidelity. So you got to become an effective communicator as a man. You must. You know, it's not your job to make your woman happy. Let me get that out your head. You know, I saw a post once. God gave women breasts and they changed them. God gave women eyebrows. They shaved them off and paint on different ones. God gave women a certain shape and they get these different augmentations done to their buttocks. So if God can't make a woman and please it, what makes you think you can? Because that's real. That's real. I'm just being honest. It's not like it's not the truth. It's real. You can't make a woman happy. Your job is to love her. And, you know, you contribute to her happiness. My wife contributes to who I am. She doesn't define what I am. And a lot of times men lose themselves in their marriage. Women, too. And I strongly uh, advise against this. You should uh, still live your dream. You could be a, you can have a happy, productive relationship with your wife and husband and, and well-rounded children. You really can if you make that lifestyle a priority for you both. So but again, that's what I have to come from the dude, because most and respectfully and I, I, I'm not hating on none of the beautiful women in the world. But man, women naturally like to spend money. Men are resource gatherers. Women are resource extractors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just you, the truth, man. I, what I love is that you speak the truth no matter what, right? I mean, like, um, and and obviously people listening to this now might be, oh, that's not true. But you know what? Um, I think I, I agree with every word you're saying. Uh, it does relate. I can definitely relate. I think my wife and I right now going through the one of the hardest couple of years that we've ever been through. Um, three kids, one baby, 
two older ones getting into a lot of things like you know in different situations at school and uh, special ed and like um, life is you know and my and me building a business and you know and and um, working sometimes long hours sometimes taking evenings or even flights you know before covid and now it's gonna I'm gonna be on flights again you know like um, and it's going through that um, kind of you Yeah, it's, it's going through a lot of adversity, right? Like it, it, it eventually some, some whole weeks can be around the topic of like just talking logistics in the household. Hey, you pick that, you know, you pick, you know, Daniel, I pick Leah, um, you know, you know they, when they're finishing to work, like, oh man, I thought about like six, how about you make it 5.30? I'm like, wait, you know, like, so those kind of things are always like a lot of um, bringing a lot of adversity and a lot of challenges. Um, And COVID and lockdowns and, and now there's a strike. So kids weren't, weren't in school like for a day. Like, it's just crazy. Like, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, man, I, you know, I can, you know, we can get through it together. And obviously we'll grow stronger out of every single, you know, piece of adversity yeah. that comes our way. My question is like, what are your tips for going through these times? Um, you know, while um, I'm not, I'm not saying like, I want to, I'm really not saying I want a divorce or anything, but I am saying like, this is the adversity times. I know I'm in money time right now. Like our mm-hmm. kids are young, uh, COVID and all kinds of things. Like in five, seven years, we're not going to be there. Like kids are going to be older. We're, we're going to yeah. have more free time together. Right now we don't even have time for dates. Like, you know, our two-year-old just wakes up every single freaking hour. Like, right. so it's well, like- You know what, Ethan, do you want to chime in? I'm going to let you answer this one, Mr. Young. Well, okay, sure, no problem. Here, here's what I suggest. First of all, you're in the part of the marriage that's called sacrifice. Nobody likes that word. You're sacrificing getting some love in. You're sacrificing a good night's sleep. You're sacrificing your resources because your children are in need of something at all times. This is hard, Mr. Johnson. This is difficult. Man, I'm busting my ass. Man, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. Jesus, Mr. J, when am I going to catch a break? Then we got hit with COVID, Mr. J. Damn, then lock this down, Mr. J. Damn, then I got to still deal with my marriage, Mr. Johnson. What do I do? Here's what you're going to do. Here's what I would recommend anyone does. How do you eat an elephant? Friends, listen to me carefully. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You take it one day at a time. If necessary, one hour at a time. at a time, if necessary, one minute at a time. Give time time to let time to do, to, to do what it needs to do. Give time time. Let me slow down when I say this. Give time time to do what time is supposed to do. It's just in what you would perceive to be a tough time right now. At this moment, it seems to be a tough time. time right now the time is constant it will not always be this way now does that help solve or even lessen the impact of what you might have to endure in the coming days no because it's not meant to I only state these statements to give you a greater understanding of your own life give your life time To develop the way that it should your children your wife had morning sickness and was vomiting and then slowly her belly starts to get bigger and bigger you see a hand move and next you know here's a baby and you have another one and you're bringing life into the world your woman is sacrificing a lot too I think I gotta say this to men because we not just men but Both parties tend to look at life through their own lens. They see what they're consciously aware of seeing or what they want to see and they're really not seeing how things really are. What advice would I tell you? You take it one day at a time. Trust me, if you can get through it. You know, if you go back to the gym, you can always put the weight up and say, man, I don't want to do this shit. It hurts too much. It's too much of a sacrifice. It's too much. It's too much, man. I don't want to keep coming to the gym. I don't want to be on a diet restriction. 
I don't want to keep going through this. Oh, I'm leaving the gym. I've canceled my membership. I filed for a divorce. I don't want to do this no more. You know, walk away. But when you are a husband and when you are a mother, your life is not your own. You have children. But no one wants to sacrifice. Like I said earlier, the problem with most couples, particularly young ones, they don't want to go through any adversity together. And not that anyone should. They're not wrong for thinking that way. But adversity is a part of life, just like night is after day, the evening and the morning. They're all one and the same, if you will. One follows the other. What I would encourage you to do is to hold on. This is where prayer, you know, a lot of stuff guys don't talk about, unless you're with some, you know, in a church organization or whatever. But just, man, you know, having some type of spiritual faith, man. A lot of times you're just going to need to have a lot of faith in God and in yourself because it's hard. And no one talks about it. And I'm glad you shared that. I really commend you for your level of transparency because there are a lot of men suffering. There are a lot of, there's a lot, let me, let's clarify this. There are a lot of people suffering. And, and there are a lot of men in marriages that are not happy. I, I, I mentor a lot of them. It's sad, man. It really is. It really is. You know, I know many men whose children don't respect them and they raise them and, you know, try to be their kid's friend instead of being their father or their mother. But again, but uh, just navigate your pathway intelligently. Learn to control your emotions as a man. Women and children can make mistakes. Men cannot. Let me say this to you again. Women and children, for all of you who are listening, let me speak clearly. Women and children can make mistakes. Men cannot. It's just as simple. Just, the standards are not the same. Never have been, never will be. It's no sense in arguing or beating a dead horse up with some totally irrelevant point that really has nothing to do with the basic natural function of our existence as men and women. It's hard being a man. It is a lot of responsibility. Yes, it is. That's why I believe God made you a man, because you can do it. I really believe that. That's the reason you were born a male, because you can do it. It's in you to do it. And I didn't say it would be easy. Didn't say it would just be a, a, a road of, uh, of flowers and roses. But he who endures, even in marriage, shall find his glory. Why do you think so many people run from something that's so important? Because it matters. There's a scripture that says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Now, if one subscribed to that tenement of thought and religion, being married is a good thing. What makes it hard is our own selfishness, our own fears and insecurities, our own inexperience at learning to love ourselves. How can you give something to a person you don't possess yourself? If I ask you for a million dollars right now, Ethan, if you don't have it, can you give it to me? No. So how can you love a woman in a way that you don't love yourself? This is what I teach men. You see, you'll give all your love out. You're going to give it to your children. Unconditionally, mind you. Unconditionally. You're going to discipline them and all that and raise them, but you're going to love your children unconditionally. You're going to love your wife unconditional. I love my wife. Don't she don't cheat on me and, you know, do all, nothing stupid. I'm going to be here. But I ask men, have you learned to love yourself? You see, if you're not giving yourself the best, how can you give it to your wife? And that door swings both ways. If she's not taking care of herself physically, she may be gaining some weight. Let herself go. It's not fat shaming. You want to be healthy. You don't want to have type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, kidney failure, all that stuff you see people deal with. You know, no one just has real conversation about it, man. People are afraid. You know, they're afraid to be, to, to, you get in an argument with a woman. What do they call them? Karens and all this crazy. I guess things change with the time. Seems to Jay from the old school. I'm a little older than that. But at the end of the day, man, a conversation is a conversation. There's no equality here, man. And it's unfortunate because look what it's yielded. Look what that thought has given our society. A bunch of single women. All these condos they build in Atlanta. Those single, those condos, all those high, bunch of single women. Ain't nobody, nobody wants to get married. 
No man wants to take a, a woman for a, a wife. That's what they call a thought or something passed around. Your sexual uh, uh, value is everything to a man. Men marry what they're attracted to. That's just the truth. You know what I mean? You're not going to marry a woman that just slept with 50 dudes. You know, the standards are not the same. A guy can sleep with 50 women and the, the world are going to call him a player. A woman to sleep with 50 men, they're going to call her a bunch of foul names. Is it right and fair? No. But let's look at it on the other hand. If I'm married and I go to court, my wife divorces me, she automatically gets custody of my kids. I got to fight for joint custody. Is that fair? No. It's just the way it is. See, it's, it's double standards and everything. It's just the truth, man. Yeah. Keep it real with your woman, young people. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Um, so that, but you know, just about wraps up this episode. Um, Ethan, do you have anything you'd like to add or final question for Mr. J? I don't know. <laughs> hey, you answered my question there. Uh, or you, you asked my question. And thank you, Mr. Johnson, for speaking on that. And this one, I'm going to defer to both of you because you guys have been married a lot longer than I have. So, well, I want to say uh, this thank you, for your, thank you, Ethan. And again, guys who listen to us, again, I ask you to share this podcast. We're on a mission here. What's the mission? The mission is to help empower people to, to have a great life, great marriage, great relationship with your children. You can have all those things, even in the world, in the state that it's sold to you. The world is still a good place. There's still good people in the world. You're looking at three of them, not three perfect people, but three good people. I want you to, if you're married, give your marriage a chance. I don't want to just say something flippant. I want to leave you with some good words. Learn to forgive each other. I'm going to say this to you again. Learn to forgive your husband and your wife when you're angry with each other. And sometimes that might take a couple of days. I, I know people say don't ever go to bed angry. I don't want to bed hot many a nights. Many a nights I don't want to bed pissed off with my wife. So if you can do that, cool. If not, God willing, you wake up the next day, you get another day to try it. Make your marriage a priority. So what do I mean by that? Yo, man, keep it funky in your house. You know what I mean? Keep the excitement going. Don't let it become stagnant. Don't let it become boring, routine. Yeah the monotony of it all. You know, we do the same thing every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday. It's the same stuff over and over and over and over. Don't do that. Spice it up a bit. Do something. Have fun. The marriage bed is undefiled. Be together, have fun. Just because you get older doesn't mean you can't have a good time. It becomes less quantity and more quality. So keep your marriage first. When it comes to your children, all they need is love. If you're married and you have children, you have to love them and instruct them and raise your children. You are not meant to be your children's friend. They have schoolmates for that. I tell all fathers, it is your job to lead your children, both men and your boys and girls. It's the mom's job to raise them and keep them healthy and to feed them and make sure that they're educated. But it is your job as that man to make sure that their moral compass is intact. That is your job as a father. You ever hear people say, oh, your children are so well behaved. Discipline starts at home. Be loving. I'm talking to my men now. Be loving. Be kind. It does not make you weak. It does not make you soft. Does it make you a sin? I'm not saying be nobody's fool, but as always, lead with love. And first, start with your wife. You are one. The man shall leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife. And the two become one flesh. If you got a problem, she got a problem. If she got a problem, you got a problem. You are not separate, even though you will both be judged separately. At your death. Stay married. Hope it helps. Love that. Guys, to wrap up, if you enjoyed this episode, got value from this episode like we did. Uh, I bet Ethan and I, like, you know, Ethan, I'm talking on behalf of I mean, both of us. I know, you know, like every time I listen to Mr. J talking, it's massive value. Um, that's why we enjoy it so much. So, guys, if you enjoyed it as much as we did, please be sure to send it to someone. 
click the link that whatever you want, if you're watching on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, check out the share link. Take that share link, share it with someone, share it in a group setting, share it in, on, in your Facebook, in your LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever platform, um, in any way that you see fit. That's one. Second, please rate us on Apple Podcasts. This is a new show, meaning we will grow determined by how much reach we have and the reach will be determined on Apple Podcasts according to ratings and, and your reviews. So we would love your help in growing. Please rate this show um, and let us know. We would just love your feedback as well. Be sure to reach out. Mr. J has a mentoring program. If you guys want actual, you know, first class access to Mr. J, you can check it out. Just reach out to him um, either on Instagram or check you know, check him out. Like you can reach through us. Um, we, you see our, Ethan. yeah, or Ethan, uh, Ethan's uh, exponential freedom group or my community commit first. Um, and yeah, just like guys, really just be involved. This is a community thing that we're creating here. It's a movement. Uh, Mr. J, you know, we wanted to reach the millions that, th that deserve to hear his message. I think that's something that, you know, Ethan and I for sure share. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, guys. Be well, guys. Bye-bye.